location with the men and women of law enforcement. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. I've been working uh, here at the Air Support Division for approximately uh, three years. I believe that it's uh, one of the tightest units in the city. Yeah, I think it has to be uh, in order to uh, function as well as it does. It's a challenge that's uh, a little different uh, from the challenge the officers face on the street. The objectives are the same, that is to uh, apprehend the criminals, but uh, we have a very unique perspective uh, to accomplish that mission from. We work together as a team. The primary responsibility of getting the police mission accomplished from the air is laid on the observer. The uh, pilot's responsible for getting me to where I need to be and in a position of which I can be effective in helping the ground units. We are very effective at uh, doing our job of catching criminals, protecting the officers on the ground, and serving the public. This is Coach 2 Incident 4732 at RD 1844. The suspect is a male black. He's wearing dark clothing. He's to the rear of the location attempting to enter through the window. Okay, roger that, ma'am. Where are we? Okay, I got coppers here on, uh, looks like Normandy flash with lights here. Yeah, coppers here. Yeah, the canine's in there with him. Okay, uh, the canine, I can see pretty good now with the uh, binoculars, and it looks like it's just uh, concrete, a uh, big hunk of concrete. Uh, there's nobody there. Okay, six, Roger, thanks. Okay, Roger. And I'm on the car. Code 200, 6672, RD 782. Air 18 to control on that car stripper. Is that uh, 47? West 42nd Street. Roger. Right. And we're going to be between uh, Flower and Figaro. See this uh, light we're using is 30.5 million candle power. It'll knock the uh, street lights out and hit the sensors, right? Okay, in the alley, right? Yeah. yeah. I got something going on here, but that's actually three and on the car. Nothing left of it. Yeah, controls, that's supposed to be a white Mustang. Somebody just called to have that thing towed away, that's all. Alright, we're out of here. They are pursuing a uh, possibly armed suspect where shots already have been fired. That's what we want. Uh, the first go around here, I thought I had two. I definitely saw one enter the uh, upstairs uh, apartment. The door faces to the east. I don't know where the other guy went. Uh, we got the suspect pinned inside that residence. As long as we're overhead, uh, he should not, uh, or he probably will not, try to escape the building and outrun the officers. So our presence has got him contained. Yes, okay, he's up on the balcony now, and he's coming down. Green shirt, uh, looks like light blue pants, maybe gray pants. Okay, he's coming up to the sidewalk now. I just be aware of it, coming northbound. Girl, let's cut your answer to 54. 15, not 1862. Somebody else? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, he's at the white vehicle. There you go, right there. 1860 PMs, come in. These officers really rely on uh, what we're telling them. 
because they, they don't have the, uh, the angles at times. They really are kind of blinded as to what they're walking into, so they rely pretty heavily. Yeah, 53, can you send that call back to the council for PMI? And basically with the light, I just try to keep the light off of the uh, officers whenever possible and on the uh, the hazardous area there so we can get a good look at what's going on. Delta East Coast 6105, away something going. Uh, the, the second suspect, we're not 100% sure where he's at. So as long as we're overhead again, uh, we're keeping him pinned down. Any sign of any more movement back there? Because our shooter may be still back there. Negative, no other movement to this ball. I'll go to the floor here and try to look underneath that tree. Team Joe 141, we're going to need at least one more unit on uh, 87th Street. Basically, what we're looking for on the flare screen is unnatural heat for the surrounding area. Be advised I flared uh, the back as best I could under the tree. Uh, no sign of your other uh, suspect. And uh, be aware of the rear building on the northwest corner. There's a bush, and I got a lot of heat out of it. The best I can tell with the binoculars and the night sun, it's a big pit bull. Uh, there he is, right there. Right at the corner of the house, sir. Uh, you can't really tell what it is. It could be a person crumpled up in that bush, or in this case, as it turned out, it was, it was a dog. So I just relayed the info to him so they don't uh, try to take cover in that area there and get bit by that animal. Uh, you wouldn't have to see a chain or anything attached to him, would you? <laughs> no, sir, I, I could barely make out that it's a, a large uh, dog there. No luck on a chain visible to me. Thanks for the word, sir. That's helpful. Hey, uh, guys, I had somebody come out the front here of the apartment. Okay, right turn, you got some on the porch coming out. You got one runner going northbound along the east side. Okay, he's all the way to the rear. He's continuing northbound. Looks like white shorts and dark shirt. Okay, east side, east side, all the way to the rear. He's going to jump the fence. Okay, he's got his hands up there. You got him. He's got something in his hand that's reflecting my light. He is caution. There's a bear. Hey, six, Roger, other southwest unit. Don't you still have one in the backyard with a black shirt on? Roger, they're taking them into custody now. No more. Okay, officers, go down the driveway on the west side there and meet with that officer there. Okay, they're going through. They got officers going through the fence right there, right from there. Yeah. Okay, guys, be aware you got officers from from the north and jumping the fence coming south. So watch your crossfire. The officer is uh, to the rear there. It looks like he was heading to the uh, east end of that uh, unattached garage. The door is pried open some there. And uh, he got to that point. You might want to look, see if he tossed it in there. Roger, sir, we the uh, garage. And I think we got a code for it on here. Okay, Roger that, guys. Good job. We'll talk to you later. Thank you, sir. Okay, we're out of here. I think uh, the, the biggest attraction to patrol, especially in L.A., is every day it's, it's the same thing and then it's not the same thing. You, you get into stuff that cops get into all over the United States on a, on a nightly basis, and then occasionally something comes up that uh, really gets your adrenaline going. X-42, we have a hit-and-run felony suspect going southbound, Lancashire from Sherman Way. Can you have an RE unit respond to Lancashire and Sherman Way? You're going to be a pursuit partner. It's going to be a uh, black uh, Dotson pickup. He's coming up on Van Owen. He turned off on Van Owen. He's uh, about to make a right turn. It's going pursuit partner. Ford, we're going to be in pursuit. We're going to be going westbound. We got a hit and run felony vehicle. Northbound Simpson. Last location was Bannowitz from Southbound Lake Sherman and Sherman Way. Hit-run suspect vehicle. It's northbound Simpson coming up on Hart. This guy just creamed somebody yeah, in an accident. We location. We're going to be going... We're going to be code six at Hart and Simpson. <laughs> Hart and Simpson. Hands up! Pongo says manos! Manos arriba! Manos arriba! Six, Hart and Simpson, all units are... Contessa, senor! Excuse me, Contessa. Contessa, the 88 is not Wisconsin. Contessa! 
Bájese su estómago. Señor, bájese del piso. Su estómago. Señor, bájese en el piso. Get down on the ground now. Señor, bájese. Acuéstese en el piso. Acuéstese en el piso. En su estómago. Señor, en su estómago. Pone sus brazos a su lado. Abre las piernas. Let me clear the car, okay, Tony? Car's clear. Put your hand right here, man. Put your hands here. Pongo smiles the key. That'll do it. See if they got an already in it for uh, Sherman Way and uh, Lancashire. That was a bad accident. Yeah. yeah, you were in an accident. Yeah, yeah, you were in an accident. Do you remember any of that? Yeah, I remember, man. But that's a main bit of the middle. Okay, I'm going to roll you over on your side right here, okay? Okay. Are you okay? You need an ambulance? Yeah, are you okay? You are okay? Yes, are you okay, man? You had a pretty bad accident. Yes, I, I know. Are you still in an accident? Yes, I know, man. Okay, sit up. Here, put this knee down. I'm gonna bring you up on this side. I don't understand Spanish, buddy. Come on. <laughs> Let's go. Stick. I don't see any booze or anything in here. Nope, nothing. What happened, man? Huh? Hey? You know what happened earlier? Pardon me? ¿Sabes lo que ha pasado? Yes, I, I know. I, I have a one accident in the Sherman Way. Okay. I, I know a drone man. No vayas a sacar la pena, man. Te traigo ahí. Ask him why he ran. ¿Por qué corrió, señor? ¿Eh? ¿Por qué corrió? Siéntese, por favor. Nada más. Siéntese. Aquí me siento. No cierra la puerta. Siéntese. No, sí, sí. No, no lo voy señor, a cerrar. Señor, por favor, siéntese adentro del carro. Bueno, me estoy sentando adentro del carro, señor. ¿no? Todo adentro. ¿Qué, okay, por favor? Eso no es necesario. Yeah. ¿Por qué ponen el seguro? Do we, know, do we know if there's any injuries back there yet? Uh, I'm sure there are. She got spinning around pretty hard. Yeah. Okay. We're sitting up there at the light, and this guy just T-bones this car right in front of us. You weren't involved in the pursuit. No, we were, we were in the pursuit, but we weren't involved in the TC. He kind of looks like he's about to turn and maybe pull over, and he looks at us, and then he jets. Okay. And next thing you know, he's going faster and faster. How, was it? How fast did you guys get up to? Uh, I wouldn't say more than 45 miles an hour. What about him? He was going about, what would you say? About 70 plus. Easy. He's having trouble controlling it. He almost went into oncoming traffic because the thing was it's so messed up from the crash, he can't keep it straight doing this. This is, uh, this is the uh, vehicle that uh, the black truck collided with. Uh, when he first hit this car, he, he, he hit it from the side here, sent the uh, car spinning in about, uh, he must have gone about two or three revolutions around. Uh, the child vehicle is pretty, uh, pretty much damaged. Uh, the uh, driver of this vehicle was uh, apparently was complaining of uh, various injuries, so he was transported to one of our local hospitals. You know what's funny about this? What's that? He said what? He thought he could get away? Yeah, he, he said he thought he could get away. And that's why he ran. That's why he ran. Because he thought he was going to get away. That's right. Been a cop for 11 years in L.A. And just when you think you see it all, something like tonight happens and kind of wakes you up again. From, from working with the Los Angeles Police Department for a little over six years now, I've been involved in three uh, officer-involved shootings. I'd much rather take someone to jail for a, a crime peacefully without any shooting, any fights, anything. But sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. And uh, it's, uh, it affects you mentally, I'll tell you that.
I've been out in L.A. for about six years now. I've been on the job for five. Uh, moved here from New York. I've been all over the country. Uh, born in Tennessee and grew up mainly southwest part of Virginia, small town. The population is a couple thousand less than in this department has, so I came from a real small town. And, um, I've decided I like the big city, so from New York to here, it's like uh, I go home, I get bored real easy, so I don't know. Just uh, not cut out for small town life anymore, I guess. Uh, we're on our way now to a, looks like a fight involving a man and a woman behind a liquor store. We just received a second call. Uh, someone called in and stated there's approximately 10 people involved in the fight now, so we're about uh, two minutes out. We're gonna, this is a, it's also a gang location, so a lot of times we have the, the gang members will get back there and fight over girls a lot of times. Three, uh, no suspect description at this time. Several citizens are at yeah, the just, location. You know, the third call just came out of the location. That means it's a good call. Next 24, that's going to be the same as our call. Air 3, 18835 in route. Well, looks like it's all over with. Where? That way? The woman in front of the location states she hears someone inside the location. She had no suspect description. What's going on? Do me a favor. We were arguing. Turn around. We were talking. Turn around. Turn around. For what? Channel top of your head. Make sure you don't have knives, guns, and bombs. Channel top of your head. What? No, come here, darling. On top of your head. Yeah, okay. Lace your this fingers together. Lace your fingers together on top of your head. My hand just got out of the Well, do the best you can. Do the best you can, all right? Sir, is this your husband? <laughs> I'm supposed to be engaged to him. <laughs> okay. Come here. Do me a favor. Stand right there. And now, tell me what happened. <laughs> well, he's been, he's been acting weird like that all day. <laughs> he acts like that when he doesn't eat anything. When he doesn't eat anything? And so I came back from getting something at the store and he asked me where his hairbrush was and I said I didn't know that it was his. I gave him my hairbrush because I bought my own because he always uses my stuff. Yeah. So then I told him he could find his own hairbrush. And he told me I had an attitude and if I didn't stop with the attitude he was going to kick me out. So then he started walking over there and he pulled me like that. He started pulling your hair and then what? <laughs> And I just wanted to get away because he's done it before, and I don't trust him. Is he drunk? No. Has he ever been in jail for beating you up before? No, I dropped the charges because I was living with him, and I had nowhere to go. Yeah? He's so he pulled unstable. your hair just now. He just pulled he's... your hair, and then what? Everybody's I accidentally got her hair. I went to pull her hair you know, back like this, saying, right. Julie, calm down. Let's talk, because we were arguing. At least I admit it. I admit the truth, and I have nothing You guys married? We're going to get married. We live together. We've been living together for about 15 months. Alex like 24, you can show code for it, 27th and Pacific. Uh, better location is going to be 22, 30, court. And I apologize. Yeah. I'm, no. Good enough, have a seat right here on the ground. Have a seat. Just right have a seat. Here. I have, have a seat. Head. I'm scrounging off of him when I'm actually supporting myself. Yeah. And so. he's very unstable because he's a widow and stuff, and he's got mental problems. Where do you guys live? And what would you like to do? What would you like us to do for you to help you right now? Well, why don't you leave him? That's a start. Because he keeps threatening me. Then you go down to the courthouse and get a restraining yeah, order. Yeah, but he's threatened. He left there. Hey, he hey, 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 out. hey! Listen up. Listen up. I'm sorry. You got to listen for a second here. Hey, hey, hey. That's fine. But listen We've up. We've had some altercations before. Yes, we have. I admit that, Mr. Peacock. I admit that. I admit okay. everything that I've done wrong. This time I went to grab her by the back and said, Julie, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, I understand that. Look, look. What I'm trying to do is trying to solve this problem without you going to jail, okay? I don't want to go to jail for nothing. Well, as of right now, she's saying she's going to give you a break and not make a, a citizen's arrest for, for battering her. I love her too much. I'm sorry. Well, I'm telling you, I don't like coming out two times in one day on the same family for the same problem. 
Same family. Well, I'm telling you, I don't like it. So if I come out here again on this type of an incident between the two of you, there's going to be no questions asked. I'm just going to hook you up and take you to jail. Okay? If she calls me once or a neighbor calls me or anybody calls me about you battering her, yes, sir. I'm not going to even ask her permission. I'm not, I don't care if she even yeah, signs up. You don't up. have to because then you, you have the, the law stating that you can exactly. you automatically do it because of too many incidents. But you know what? Twice today? I, there was no twice. You're right. Today. I'm saying if there's twice, I'm oh, not going to ask oh. anybody. You're automatically going, okay? Yes, sir, Mr. Peacock. Okay? Okay. Because I, I hate solving the problem twice or thinking that I did. Okay? Because right. we've got a lot of calls out there, and it, she's, I've let her know all her options, what she needs right, to do in right. the future. Can, if someone can give me a hand up because I can't use this hand to get up because I did break it, I would appreciate what, what hand's broken? This what hand. hand hurts? They both hurt. I got this one cracked. He broke his hand chasing me about two months ago. Okay. There you go. Well, I'm trying to... Well, we did, we didn't, we, we did, did any physical thing happen from that? No. Okay. I was just chasing you down the street saying, Julie, wait, come back, come back, because we have little fights once in a while. But, you know, I try, I try to work them Arguing out. Arguing is one thing, but when you get physical, then the law steps in, and I've already told you what the consequences are if we come out again, okay? Yes, sir, Mr. Peacock. You're all right? No, I'm going to go lay down. Mr. Peacock, you, you, I'm sorry. You dial, you dial what you need to dial, okay? I'm sorry. And I'll come back, and I'll take him to jail, and that'll solve that problem for you. Can we hug him and make up? I'm sorry. Just let her be and just let everything calm down. All right? Okay. Thank you. I told her she needs to help herself. She needs to get a restraining order. She needs to move away and part from him. We ended up separating them and they were going to run back together again. More cops at the same time tomorrow. But next today, a stressed executive plans a vacation that's as close to heaven as she can imagine. But has she got too close? Stand by for another bizarre installment of Beyond Belief, fact or fiction.